typically the thing that gets me excited about an MLB DFS slate is good pitching because I feel good about my ability to identify pitching. Typically it's my strength with regards to, you know, me as a DFS player, but today I'm actually excited about the stacking options there. It's a 12 game slate and I could legitimately talk up six different stacks and feel good about them. And I think all of them have paths to really high upside. So a bit of an inversion from the typical way I'm, you know, get jazzed about a slate. And I think that should lead to a lot of fun. We're going to break down what those stacks are, how I'm ranking them, why they may be high upside or maybe risky, why it's worth that risk and much more to get you ready for Friday night. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Numberfire here to break down Friday. 12 game main slate with locks up for 7 5 p.m. Eastern for today. The low to weather note on this slate there is a high chance of rain tonight in St. Louis for the Dodgers and the Cardinals. They may be able to play through it, but I would check back on that later. There is an offense like in that game, so we'll check back on the timing of the rain in St. Louis, the severity of it, to see if they can get that game in. We'll talk about the stacking options and pitching in just one second, but first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it. You can find us there. The solo shot also goes up over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up over on YouTube or leave us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. The second leg of Horse Racing's Big Three is here, and FanDuel is the best place to bet the Preakness stakes. Because right now, all customers can get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20. That means you'll get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. Bet the Preakness with America's number one sports pick. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20 this Saturday. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first win wager. Refund issued in non withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12th, 2023. For restrictions apply, see terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. Joe Ryan checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,000, followed by Sandy Alcantara at 10-4. We got Bryce Elder and Bryce Miller squaring off. Elder's salary 10-2, Miller's salary 99. Marcus Stroman comes in at 95 with Tony Gonsolin and potentially that rain game in St. Louis, 93. Anthony DiSclefani facing Alcantara at 91. Then we have Blake Snell, Yusei Kikuchi, Ranger Suarez, Michael Kopech, Martin Perez, James Paxton, Jake Irvin, Reed Detmers, and Kyle Gibson as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, of the guys in that list, the only guy pitching like a true ace so far this year is Joe Ryan. And I think it makes a lot of sense to put Joe Ryan atop our list for tonight. Ryan is facing the Angels, who have a 104 WRC plus against righties, but they're not a low strikeout team, roughly average there at 23%, and not a lot of walks either. The walk aspect doesn't really matter for Ryan much because he has just a 4% walk rate this year, and it comes with a 30% strikeout rate. Ryan debuted a new splitter at the beginning of this year, and clearly things going great with that new pitch. It does let up some hard contact, but that has not killed Ryan as of yet. Both his actual ERA and his expected ERA are well under three. The Twins also are starting to let Ryan go deeper in games. That's kind of been a trademark of Rocco Baldelli is taking pitchers out pretty early. But with Ryan, he's gone 100 plus pitches in three of his past five starts. He's gone at least six innings in every game so far this year. So I don't see a lot of reason to nitpick Joe Ryan. I think that he kind of just checks every box and makes a lot of sense. So to me, you just use Joe Ryan, feel good about that, and uh, proceed from there with your pitching options. Now, I said Joe Ryan is the only one on this this slate pitching like an ace. Sandy Alcantara is an ace, but he hasn't always looked like that so far this year. The bad at ball bait on him, not as good as it was last year when he was so dominant, but he's still good, and I think he could be a fun play tonight. He gets the Giants. They are a good offense against righties, but they will strike out. 24% strikeout rate against righties on the current active roster. That gives a boost to Alcantara. And he can also get there in terms of DFS, paying off his salary via volume. Across the past three starts, here are Alcantara's pitch counts. 103, 113, and 106. 
So as a result, I have Alcantara at the highest projected pitch count on the slate, and that does matter a lot. Plus, Alcantara is still getting whiffs. He has a 13.7% swinging strike rate so far this year. It's just not always translating to strikeouts. That could change tonight against this high strikeout team. I have Alcantara projected for 6.7 strikeouts, which ranks second behind just Joe Ryan. So if you want to buy low on Alcantara, I think this could be a good spot to do so. Now you're buying low on a guy with the second highest salary at 10-4 on the road against a decent offense. You're not buying low, low. But I still think that this is a, from a roster perspective, a spot to get Alcantara when he might not be at his peak popularity. On a lot of slates, I'm not super enthused about the value play as a pitcher because, again, values are typically values for a reason. But this slate tonight is a bit different. Reed Detmer's salary is $8,100, and he's not perfect, but I absolutely like him enough to use him for tonight. Detmer's is facing the Twins, who are a plus matchup for a lefty right now. They have an 88 WRC plus with a 28% strikeout rate, which is the highest number on the slate. The strikeout portion for Detmers has been there this year. He has a 26% strikeout rate. His swinging strike rate is validating that strikeout rate at 13%. So the, the strikeout aspect of Detmers, very easy sell. The reason that Detmers is lower salary right now is because of hard contact. He has let up a 43% hard hit rate this year with a 40% fly ball rate. And that's gotten him to, into trouble at times. It also could get him into trouble here because the Twins have some dangerous batters who can punish you if you make mistakes. But if you get strikeouts, it may not matter as much. And I do think that Detmers will do that. I have Detmers projected for 6.6 .6 strikeouts tonight. That ranks third on the slate behind just Ryan and Alcantara. And looking at the salary, you save a lot by dipping down to Detmers versus those two guys. So I'm not going to put Detmers above them because the batted ball data does matter and they you know, are better objectively. But after accounting for salary, I do think Detmers is at least in their tier tonight. That's good enough for me to use Detmers on this slate. I am more than happy to put Detmers in my player pool, see what happens, take the savings, because I think he does enough to justify that on this slate. So to me... Top pitching options for tonight will go Joe Ryan 1, Sandy Alcantara 2, Reed Detmers 3, and all three of those guys very much in play and well worth their salaries on Friday night. Now, let's talk about those fun stacks and dig into the ones that stand out. Carl Kaufman coming up to make his debut tonight for the Rockies. And luckily for him, it's his debut, but it's not at Coors Field, so that's good. The problem is he's facing the Rangers, who have a very powerful offense, and I think the Rangers make sense from a stacking perspective here. Kaufman has been in AAA thus far, and you can't really judge a Rockies pitcher ERA in AAA because of the park. But the plate discipline numbers are relevant down there, and Kaufman did struggle there as well. He had a 15% strikeout rate with a 7% walk rate. He let up a lot of balls in play with those two numbers combined. Only 40% of those balls in play are on the ground with a ton of line drives. We saw the same thing last year as far as the plate discipline numbers. The ground ball rate was a bit higher for Kaufman then. But we're going to see a lot of balls in play here. He's probably not going to be super overwhelming from a ground ball perspective. So I think it makes a lot of sense to target Kaufman here. We'll be stacking against him at Coors Field for sure. But on this slate, when he's facing the Rangers and a powerful offense, I do think even here, it makes a lot of sense to go at the Rangers as our top stack, even on a really quality slate for stacking. The Rangers just got Corey Seager back. Didn't do a ton in his rehab stint, in large part because it was a very short rehab stint. Uh, Seager came back a couple nights ago and actually did have a couple of hard hit balls. So I think that was encouraging despite not getting a hit. Uh, two hard hit balls there. His injury slash illness is not like a red flag kind of thing for me. So I'm fine being in on Seager pretty much right away now that he's back. His salary, $3,000. Great. I think that's going to mean he'll be pretty popular for tonight, but still makes a lot of sense. So sometimes with injuries, you want to hold off for buying back in. I'm not super inclined to do so with Seeker. I think it makes a lot of sense to be on him from the jump. Number two stack is the Astros, and they're facing a lefty. And that's a big part of why I feel okay stacking them tonight, because they're a very different team against lefties than righties. Against righties, they lack power, which means they lack upside. Against lefties, the Rysos 171, which is much more stackable. They're facing Ken Waldachuk and the A's bullpen tonight, so I think we should be high on the Astros here. The bullpen, to the A's credit, has been getting better, so 
That's not as big of a factor anymore. I called them the Coors Field uh, effect before. That's not as true anymore, but it's still, you know, definitely stackable. But while Chuck himself is struggling, across eight starts, he has a 5.37 skill interactive ERA. He's walking too many guys, letting up a lot of fly balls. His hard hit rate allowed is not a huge red flag, but it's also not low enough to counteract the other issues in his profile. When you put that all in a blender, it's led to a 7.02 ERA for Waldachuk this year. His expected ERA is 6.08. So we'd be looking to stack against him with most teams. I'm pretty down on the Astros, but I think that they are still good enough to fit into this discussion. So I'm going to put the the Astros second behind the Rangers for tonight. Now, when I'm doing that and stacking the Astros, the one guy I will not be including in those stacks is Jose Abreu. The numbers for him are pretty bad this year. He has a 265 expected Woba with a 043 ISO and literally zero home runs. Maybe this is the night. Maybe Jose Abreu finally breaks out of this slump that's been lasting for, I think, like over a year now. Maybe he finally gets it done. He double dongs, gets back on track. Possible, but I'm okay missing out. I am okay not being there when that happens. I will buy back in once I see some sort of signs of life. I'm not convinced right now that Abreu can get me a 30-point game on FanDuel, and that's kind of what I want, even from a value play, like at least a path of 30. Not sure if he can get there. So I'll miss the boat the first time that he goes off. That's okay. I'm very comfortable with that. Um, I, I will be looking elsewhere within my Astro stacks for tonight. Now, those are the two stacks that make a lot of sense from a traditional stacking perspective. The reason the slate is so fun is that you can talk yourself into a lot of other stacks where the upside is big. They might be risky, but that's an okay trade-off given the upside they present. The two best examples of this are the Orioles and the, the Royals. I'm going to talk about the Orioles here because they're a better offense, but the Royals will discuss some things to watch along with two other teams that uh, grade out well from a stacking perspective. The Orioles are facing Yusei Kikuchi, who seems to have turned things around in some senses. Across eight starts, he has a 3.93 skill interactive ERA. He's not walking a lot of guys, and his ERA is good as well at 3.89. That's why it's not a perfect stack. There is risk in this profile for sure. The problem is that the bad at ball data for Kikuchi is still very rough. He has let up a 48% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate. That's why his expected ERA is 5.03, despite the good results and the good skill interactive ERA. When you're facing bad teams, you can get by with that. The Orioles, I think, are a good team. I think they're legitimately fun. Uh, they have a 126 WRC plus against lefties, a 191 ISO. They put the ball in the air a ton. So I think they're kind of a bad matchup for Kikuchi. Now, because he does have some good play discipline numbers and has good results, it's possible he could mow through them. Or they could capitalize on the hard contact and make him pay and get us some upside for DFS. I want to stack the Orioles right now in case they do the latter there. Cause I think that's very much within the range of outcomes. So Orioles, a great tournament stack for tonight, despite the risks they come with kind of seems like Anthony Santander is getting back into his groove. If you are a longtime listener, of the solo shot, you know, I've loved Santander for a long time and he's back in the month of May. Santander has a three Oh six ISO. He has a 52% hard hit rate with a 17% barrel rate. That's all while reducing his strikeout rate, not as low as it was last year, but better than it was earlier on this year. The salary for Santander, $3,000. I love him as a one-off. I love him within the stack. He's probably one of the first guys I turn to within this stack for tonight. Uh, so we know how good he can be. He's slashing it against Anthony Santander, fully back on the menu, $3,000, way too low for a guy with his upside and skill set. Things to watch. We're going to go through three more spots we could consider stacking for tonight because that's how good this stacking slate is. As mentioned, the other risky stack with some batted ball upside is the Royals. They're facing Michael Kopech, who is a talented pitcher, but and that's why there's risk here. And that's also risky because the Royals are struggling. But his batted ball numbers both last year and this year are rough. 51% hard hit rate allowed this year, 49% fly ball rate. The Royals are just an 80 WRC plus against righties, which means we can't get overconfident here, but I think there's enough here for it to be viable. So I think both the Orioles and the Royals make a ton of sense. And if you want just like dinger potential, I think those are two prime spots to get it. Hint, hint, we'll talk about that later on. It's a similar thought process with the A's as with the Royals, where the A's are facing Brandon Belak, who had fine numbers in AAA. His first few appearances in the majors have been fine too. 
But from what else, I don't mind the A's. They've got some guys who are palatable for daily fantasy. You could do a lot worse there. So don't mind the A's filtering them in as well from a stacking perspective. Finally, if we get the all clear on the weather for tonight, uh, the Dodgers are facing Steven Matz. Matz lets up hard contact, which broadly means we can target him. The Dodgers, you look at them this year against lefties, it kind of looks like they're struggling. Their WRC plus is just 94. I think that number is very misleading. Their ISO is 212 with a 46% fly ball rate, and those numbers are very good, and those numbers stabilize much more quickly than WRC plus does. So I think if we expand the sample and give the Dodgers a full year, they're going to wind up being a good team against lefties in 2023. If you get the sense they'll fly under the radar, whether it be because of weather or because they're on the road, maybe people are high on mats, anything like that. I don't know why, you know, stuff like that. Like that could be it, it, anything leading to their being a bit overlooked, I think is attractive. Their implied total today, not super, super high. So I would keep an eye on the Dodgers, see if maybe we can get them at a slight roster rate discount. If we can, I'd be very okay going there and making them a priority stack for tonight. Dinger calls for today. Mentioned before that the Orioles and the Royals are in prime spots for hitting home runs. So we're going to focus on those two teams for the Dinger calls for today. The boring one, Anthony Santander. He went deep yesterday. I think he goes deep once again tonight. Facing Kikuchi, he's just back. Uh, looking at the May numbers, the batted ball data, it's all good again. Facing Kikuchi lets up a lot of hard contact. Santander hits well from the right side of the plate. So Anthony Santander, the boring home run call. The fun Surprise, Pasquantino doesn't have more home runs, given that he does have pretty good, you know, like a pretty good ISO against righties. But uh, Pasquantino only has uh, eight home runs so far this year. I think that's a, a decently low number for the potentially has the number of fly balls he hit and, hits and stuff like that. So we're going to put him in the dinger call section for today, facing off with Kopech. So dinger calls for tonight, Anthony Santander and Vinny Pasquantino. That is all that we have here for today and this week here on the Solo Shots. I want to thank you, as always, for tuning in across this week. We'll be back with you once again next week, Monday through Friday, breaking down the MLB DFS main slates, also talking PGA and USC for select events. To get those as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Hope you all have fantastic weekends. Good luck to your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again Monday for some more MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.